Hi everyone, let's work through some examples uh, involving derivatives with sine and cosine functions in them. So this will uh, involve sines and cosines, but also all of our constant multiple and sum and difference rules and power rules and so on from the last section. Okay, so first one, we are given function h of t equals 3 cosine t minus 4 sine t. And we're supposed to find its derivative, which will be an h prime of t. So big operation is the subtraction, which means we can first just look at the cosine of t. Uh, I have a constant multiple there, so the 3 will just carry along. The derivative of cosine, this is what this section is all about, you want to memorize it now. The derivative of cosine is minus sine, so this is going to become a negative 3 sine t. And then we have a minus from the difference. The 4 is going to hang out, constant multiple. And then the derivative of sine you should memorize is cosine. Okay, so there's the derivative of that first function. Once again, on the skills test, expect to see questions like that where you just take the derivative, but the rest of this would be more like what you'd see on an exam where I ask you for something a little bit more than that. So the second one is asking for the slope of the tangent line to f of x equals 2x plus sine x over 2 at the point where x equals pi over 6. Okay, so if we want to find slope, the first thing we should do is take the derivative. This is again sum and difference rule first. There's a sum. So we'd look at the 2x. The derivative of 2x is 2. And then we'd look at sine x over 2. A lot of people are thrown off by that and think they need a quotient rule, but you don't really. That's the same as 1 half times sine x. Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So that's really the plus carrying through, the one half just hanging out because it's a constant multiple, and then the derivative of the sine x is a cosine x. Okay, so there's my derivative. I want to know the slope of the tangent line when x equals pi over 6, which means I should plug the pi over 6 in to this equation that I just wrote down. Okay, and we end up with that, and we hopefully know our unit circle. So pi over 6 is right here, kind of close to the x-axis. We're looking for cosine, which is going to be the x value. So this is a root 3 over 2. So we have 2 plus 1 half times root 3 over 2, which is 2 plus root 3 over 4. And I want an exact answer there. It says it in the problem, so no decimals. Okay, part C asks us to go a step further and actually find the equation for the tangent line to g of x equals x squared plus 2 cosine x at the point where that should have an x in it, x equals pi over 2. So similar first step, we need to find the derivative. The derivative, this is a sum, so we'll first look at the x squared, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and then the plus will carry through, the 2 is a constant multiple, the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x, so that's actually going to become a minus 2 sine x. And then we want to plug in pi over 2. So we have 2 times pi over 2 minus 2 times the sine of pi over 2. So now we're thinking unit circle, pi over 2 right at the top. Our y value, sine is asking for y, so our y value is 1, which means we have 2 times pi over 2, pi, minus 2 times 1. So this is our slope. Slope equals pi minus 2. We also need, I don't think I left myself enough room, we also need the y-coordinate of our point. So our point has an x-coordinate pi over 2. Its y-coordinate has to come from the original equation. So we're going to have a pi over 2 squared, which is a pi squared over 4. And then cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So the 2 cosine pi over 2 actually goes away. So this is going to look like y minus pi squared over 4 is equal to pi minus 2 times x minus pi over 2. Squeezing a little bit. So y is going to equal, let's see, so this we actually end up having to FOIL. 
we get a pi x, so it's our first, minus pi squared over 2 outside, minus 2x plus pi, and then we're adding this pi squared over 4. I don't know if that made it much better. So I see pi x minus 2x, that's these two. And then I see, if we multiply this by 2 over 2, negative 2 pi squared over 4 plus 1 pi squared over 4 is a negative 1 pi squared over 4. And then we also have the plus pi. So that one's a messy one. Again, exact answers. I almost always ask for exact answers on a problem like that, so make sure you're comfortable not switching everything to decimals. Okay, uh, D is asking us to find the derivative of p of z equals z to the fourth plus 4z four plus 4 cosine z minus sine pi over 2. Okay, I don't think I'll need to do much simplify, so we'll just start at p prime of z. So this is a big sum and difference. So we're going to start with z to the fourth, and the derivative of z to the fourth is 4z cubed. The derivative of 4z is just the 4. The derivative of 4 cosine z, the 4 is just going to carry through. The derivative of cosine is minus sine. And then last one, we have minus the derivative of sine of pi over 2. Watch that one. That's a tricky constant. So its derivative is 0. There's no variable in there. Okay, last one, a word problem. We have function p of t equals 24 plus 8 sine t. And this gives us the population of a particular kind of animal living on a small island. P is measured in hundreds, T is measured in decades since January 1st, 2010. We want to find the instantaneous rate of change of P on January 1st, 2030. Explain how the population is behaving. Okay, so if we want to find the instantaneous rate of change, that should immediately say take the derivative, P prime of T. So this is a sum. The derivative of the 24 is 0, so that's kind of nice. So we actually only end up looking at the 8 sine t. The 8 is a constant multiple, so it'll hang out. Derivative of sine is cosine t. So I get a nice simple derivative function. I'm interested in what's happening on January 1st, 2030, and since t is measured in decades, I would say that what I'm really looking for there is p prime of 2. Back to my trusty phone calculator for now. Do not follow my example. I'm not going to let you use phone calculators on the test. Bring a regular one. Okay, so if we want, ooh, this will be interesting. We'll see what kind of number we get, and then I'll figure, see if I can figure out if I'm in the right mode. 8 cosine of 2. Okay, hold on, I'm peeking. Oh, there it is, radian mode, so I think I believe it. That looks like it's really bright for you guys. You can't see anything, but what I'm seeing is that this is approximately negative 3.329. I don't know how many decimal places I want. Measured in hundreds, so it was probably fine here. Okay, so this is negative 3.32900, otherwise known as ne about negative 333 uh, per decade. So the population, so this is 100 per decade. Okay, so just explaining how the population is behaving. This is saying that on January 1st, 2030, the population is decreasing at a rate of about 333, whatever kind of animal this is, per decade. That's what it's saying. Oh, super blurry. I even have autofocus on. Sorry, guys. Unblur, please. It won't do it. Well, hopefully you can read what that says. Thanks for watching.